due to the lasering process of the material, you had these harsh edges. They are hard, they are not that even, and we'll have to get rid of them to make it good. Take your sanding paper and work it. With edges, sand. Sometimes the shipment gets a little bang and hit there, and it ends up in the foam like here. These dents can simply be removed. Take some boiled water and just gently pull it upon. Just pour it over it. The heat needs to affect the, the foam, and the foam will uh, heal itself. The dent will almost disappear. Try this on a a spare piece of foam. I don't know how much you boil your water, but mine, <laughs> mine does well. And now look, the dent is almost gone. Just gently there, a little stretch, a little dent left. So we'll continue. Take some um, silicone wristband from your sports department and use it as a form. Where you just can pour the hot water in and will stay longer within and you will have more out of your boiled water. So by now the dent is almost gone. See? Still there but minimalistic. Almost gone. Perfect! Find the proper holes. The rod. It needs to go in there. It's somewhere in there. To find the right hole, take this. Align the edges. After having aligned the edges, take some tape and fix those positions. It doesn't have to move anymore at this point. Now turn the piece around, so that the side plate will lie on the desk. We'll take the rod and push it through the hole. By doing so, we will mark where the rod will get out, and with that we can precisely make those rod passing through the side walls. Balsa can be a piece of so if you have got a piece like this and you'll have to cut out your elements then um, take this uh, description and mark it up and cut as good as you can. You will end up eventually, if you are not that precise like I am, because I'm not precise, I'm a normal ordinary guy who's not that used to fumble with these things, to have some differences in these sizes. That doesn't matter, don't get scared because of this, because you take then the two sheets, the two halves you have, basically cut in the middle first, after you've painted it, and roughly cut out the corners here. Then you just take the two pieces and tape it over another with some tape here. By that, you have something that looks symmetrical, uh, symmetrical and you can uh, cut out extra pieces that stand off from one to another. You get exactly the same pieces and that's what you want. You want the elements to be identical, 100%. Next up, the motor mount. I decided to embed it a bit. You need to cut a little bit here and there to make space for the printed item, like so. I wanted the bottom plates to become a seamless part of the fuselage. So I painted up the shape, like so, adjusted the drilling bit, and began to do the mess. What a massacre! But now the piece which got printed perfectly fits in snug, tight, and seamless.
bits and bits of servos. Same goes with the VTX. It needs to be embedded. Take it, place it, drop it. Time to laminate the wings. Everything's inside. Let's close with them and make it fancy. Next I'll place a GPS module. It will be placed in the fuselage. Same procedures every time. Find the right place. Drill the pieces out and simply embed it snug and tight. And while the fuselage is still open and accessible, I'll hide the wires. The run cam eagle needed to be embedded too. Instead of using the pre-dead piece, I tried to embed it myself. And yeah, of course, the wires had to be embedded too and hidden away from the site. The final messy act is of course to embed the ESC in the back of the fuselage. Only the cooling plate will have to look out of the fuselage. The wind will take it, cool it down and the ESC gets happier. And here is what the ESC will control. This little masterpiece of a motor will push about 2.4 kilograms of thrust. Impressive. Well, this is a quite new story for us and we don't know where we end up. But if you subscribe to our channel and join us, we'll figure it out together. See you next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome.